Having said that, uh, let's uh, let's get this going. Um, I'll try to keep us on time. The uh, agenda for today is pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll have the regular operational update. We'll have the discussions from the board committee, uh, and then we're gonna present uh, the results from Drupal Column Los Angeles, and then we're gonna talk about Drupal.org, and then after that we'll have our executive session. So with that, I'll give the floor to Holly, and I believe uh, we well we definitely have um, you know, quorum. So yeah, yeah. Don't have to say that as well. We're good there. Excellent. So <clears throat> uh, again, just apologies for the late packet this time around, but um, July uh, lots of stuff to talk about. But as promised, we're sort of trying to condense those things. So let me talk a little bit about a couple of the highlights. Um, and I snuck one in, it's actually an August highlight, but I decided it had to go in the packet now, <laughs> was uh, uh, TripleCon Barcelona ticket sales um, had been looking sluggish for a bit, uh, but we just closed out the regular registration period and learned that we are on pace for our budgeted numbers, which is about 2,000 folks for the show. Um, which is great. Um, that's fewer folks than we had at Amsterdam. We had about 2,300 people in Amsterdam. Uh, but if you'll recall, Amsterdam was kind of a surprise uh, to everyone. Um, so uh, uh, we, we don't think that we'll see that bump again, right? But it does put us slightly ahead of Prague, which was about 1,800 or 1,850 folks. So it's good to see ticket sales are right in the pocket for Barcelona. We're very happy about that. Um, Drupal Jobs was also a highlight in July. It was the third month in a row of revenue growth for Drupal Jobs and third month in a row above $10,000 revenue for Drupal Jobs. Um, and that's the first time that we've had that kind of consistency out of the platform. So um, we're excited to see that happening organically, but uh, we are working on a, a rethink. We won't call it a relaunch, I guess, that scares people, but a rethinking of Drupal Jobs to help make that growth happen a little bit faster. Uh, so we've got a team here internally that's working on that. We're currently focused on sort of a customer discovery process using the Lean Canvas methodology. So um, we've been interviewing folks. Uh, we'll actually be talking after this meeting about what we discovered. So that uh, that's good stuff. Um, and the other really cool news about Triple Jobs is that uh, Matt Holford, who is the CTO of DoSomething.org, which is an amazing nonprofit based in New York. They do uh, awesome work connecting um, young people to volunteerism and activism. Um, and they are a huge, huge Triple Shop. Uh, they get a one month sabbatical there after a certain period of time. And he, as long as they volunteer with their sabbatical time, and he's spending his volunteer sabbatical with us working on Drupal jobs. So cool. yeah, it's really rad. And uh, we decided not to put him on features because we weren't really <laughs> sure what uh, what features to focus on since we're going through customer discovery right now. So he is building uh, and focused on reporting right now so that we can um, better track what's happening on the site as we do roll out some of the changes that, that we anticipate. So, so that's really cool. Um, and the thing to watch categories are sort of performance to our, our mid-year adjustment. So we, we put the retrenchment plan in place. Uh, we have a monthly update of that, the forecast. Um, and uh, in, you know, as of, as of right now, uh, we've made really good solid progress on expense reduction. Uh, revenue is still sluggish, not dangerously sluggish right now uh, with DrupalCon Barcelona ticket sales um, coming in strong at the end of regular <laughs> registration that, that that did a lot for us um but um you know thing, things because the cons are so um such a big chunk of change um on the revenue and expense side um they can cause a lot of swing in our forecast so things will get a lot clearer after we close out barcelona but you know we're in an okay place right now just not spectacular um and you know we're trying to be really conservative with those forecasts so that we're prepared for the worst, you know, basically. Um, and then uh, low lights, um, although we're pleased with the Barcelona ticket sales, the sponsorship income is definitely off. We're only gonna hit about 80% of goal for that. Um, so that's something that the sales team has been um, struggling with and 
I think it's just a reinforcement of the idea that DuPont sponsorship in Europe is really tough to grow because uh, we see so many actors who, you know, shops uh, primarily who are only working with, um, uh, you know, seeking client work within their country. So uh, the opportunities are just a lot less than they are in the North American con uh, for sponsorship there. So 80% um, of gold does represent, it, it is lower than the 2014 Amsterdam con. And it, again, I think Amsterdam has this centrality that we're able to capitalize on a little bit better. Um, it is, uh, but it is not, um, you know, a hugely significant reduction. So just to give that context. So those are the, the key things I, I wanted to share. Um, and any, uh, you know, any questions from those? Yeah. Uh, um, with the uh, sponsorship being down, um, in for Barcelona, I just wondered if there was any kind of common theme coming back to the sales team about um, what people were saying. Was it is it primarily around, as you said, the um, lack of uh, local, you know, that people really have a local focus, so they're not interested in sponsoring. You know, if they're in Germany, they're not interested in sponsoring something in Spain. Is that really the the main driver? Or were there any other themes that we should be aware of? Um, yeah, I mean, there. Well, yeah, Megan, actually, do you want to address some of the other issues? Sure, yeah, I mean, we've always known that when we go to countries that um, Drupal shops don't sell into, that they are less eager to step up and sponsor. Um, and also, when we go into countries that don't have a large Drupal shop base, we lose a lot of the silver sponsorships, like that lower mm -hmm. tier. So uh, we saw that, but we also did a big push to ISVs. Um, and whether it was timing or um, I think some of it was a bit of timing, um, some of it's re regional issues. Uh, a lot of them were saying they're putting their money into North America. They weren't looking to fund Europe. And so we're kind of sussing out, like, w is it uh, dev tools? Is it business apps that are uh, making specific decisions that way so we can understand? Like currently right now I'm reaching out to um, DevOps tools. I've talked with um, Nginx and Atlassian and... Docker and um, I think New Relic and let them know that we're thinking of a more developer conference in Europe next year with a focus on a DevOps summit and there was mm -hmm. more interest there. If I can show, really demonstrate that we're, we have a DevOps audience, these people are more interested. So um, we're, we're definitely digging into the feedback we got this year. That's really interesting. Thanks, Megan. Yeah. Anything else that you guys want to talk about? Or other parts of the packet that I didn't really address here? All right. No more questions. Um, I guess we can then move on to the, um, the board committee updates. Which I I think we don't have anything typed in because I keep forgetting to email. I did email. No, I did email this time, <laughs> but I didn't get anything well, back. Well, maybe we can go around the room then. Follow the list. In, I'll uh, go in first. The... Sorry, Holly. Okay. <laughs> so we didn't meet. So we don't have an update. But we did meet <laughs> this month. And even though uh, it was for this month, you should just know we're just focusing on reviewing the long-term strategy and getting feedback. Governance? Uh, we didn't meet. However, we uh, have uh, completed a draft handoff for the nominations committee, and that's been uh, shared with uh, with uh, uh, um, the entire governance committee and, and Holly at this point. So I think the, the next step there is to um, decide whether it's Addy or Denise who uh, who uh, um, becomes uh, chair for, uh, for, for this cycle because Samir is up for up for uh, reappointment. We also had conversations. All right, thank you. Fine. Various, um, we also had conversations with the various board members that are up for reappointment about their intention. I find it hard to hear you, Denise. Sorry, I'm as close as I can get. Oh, I know why you can't hear me. How about now? 
Much better, thank Is that better? Yeah. Yes. What I said was we also had conversations with the board members that um, are up for reappointment about their intentions. So. Yeah, that, that hasn't changed from the last meeting. Um, um, uh, I don't think, unless there have been additional additional uh, information. That, uh, yeah, I got a new I got a new email from one of them. Okay. Oh. Cool. All right. Thank you. Anything else from governance? If not, let's move on to finance. So the finance committee met yesterday to review the financial statements in the 990. We'll be mm -hmm. uh, presenting those in executive session and recommending approval. All right. Thank you. Uh, the exec committee, we did not meet. And then um, the marketing committee? They did meet, well, but it was while I was on vacation, and I haven't followed up with Gina, so I'm not sure what was discussed. Uh, so I don't have an update at this point. All right, then. <clears throat> All right. The next, um, unless there's any questions on that. All right, let's move on to uh, Drupal Con Barcelona. LA, yeah. All right. Sorry, LA. <laughs> uh, okay, so we are going to be talking about Drupal Con Los Angeles. And do you want to go next one? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do it. <laughs> okay, so we ended up at 3,186 people. We were down slightly from Austin, but it was really only about 5% of a decrease. And we were up about pretty noticeably in the business summit, and we launched a new higher ed summit, which uh, was extremely popular. We ended up releasing additional tickets after the original allotment and had a couple um, summit crashers that we had to kind of keep an eye on actually on site. Uh, so that was uh, exciting to see that people responded well to that. Uh, and we had 357 people attend our trainings. Um, so I'm going to kind of crew, I have a lot of data in here, and we will be posting a blog post, I think probably next week or the week after, with all of the information from the slides and kind of diving into a bit more of the numbers. But I'll just kind of cruise through some of these things here. Um, basically, overall, we saw an increase in beginner and intermediate and a slight decrease in advanced uh, skill sets. And developers definitely are number one uh, audience at uh, 27%. Um, and then the uh, industries that were represented, it was really uh, neat to see this year. We didn't limit people to um, picking one industry, so we can't really compare easily year over year. But we saw quite a big presence in uh, education and technology and uh, nonprofit, which is not particularly surprising. Um, and then just kind of diving into the financials, here's a quick summary of uh, where we ended up. So the goal is what we built our budget off of, the actual is where we ended up, and the differential kind of uh, shows you how we balanced against that goal. Uh, and I'll get into the line items on the next one, but the moral of the story is that we did a pretty good job of maintaining our uh, net income uh, margins, even with a slightly lower ticket sales than what we were anticipating. Uh, so as far as ticket sales go, the uh, conference tickets came in about 200 uh, under what we had anticipated, and we came in um, a little bit over on free tickets. So uh, tickets that go to um, sponsors or volunteers or speakers, that type of thing. Uh, we also were down a little bit on training. We had 450 training attendees in Austin, and we only had about 350 in LA, so that took a little bit of uh, income down. Uh, but the Higher Ed and Business Summit both outperformed uh, what we had budgeted, so that was exciting. And then this is our uh, summary of our expenses, and uh, as you can see, there are quite a few numbers there. Um, one of the most exciting things, if you look at the conference facility costs and furnishings, uh, one of the things that people may not be aware of is uh, we actually got the entire convention center for about $5,000, and the reason why we were able to get that rental fee was due to the hotel nights that were booked by the people attending our conference. So the local tourism board um, calculated a, a rebate for us that was essentially $130,000 based on the- Wow. Yeah, yeah. So- That's uh, awesome. Yeah, it, it comes to, out to about $40 per attendee. So wow. that's pretty significant um, when we kind of calculate that in into what those ticket prices go to fund. So, um, 
And again, that wasn't money that came directly to us, but it kind of does by default, we get that, that incentive back. Um, and then on top of that uh, uh, rebate at the convention center, we also got about a $12,000 rebate from the host hotel to fund the coder lounge. So that was really um, another great way to save money there. Can I go to the next? Uh, okay, so we uh, obviously we missed our goals slightly, um, but we found a lot of kind of interesting nuggets along the way. But a few things that we uh, heard uh, kind of anecdotally was uh, there wasn't quite that drive of uh, coming to learn the new things about D8 because we weren't quite there yet. Um, so for some people that had maybe come to trainings in the past, uh, they may have been wanting to wait until D8 is released and there's a new um, training to come and attend. Um, I think LA was also perceived as an expensive destination, uh, particularly for freelancers. And then some kind of secondary things that we heard were um, the West Coast location was kind of prohibitive for people coming from Europe. You know, it's an extra distance to travel, so more time away from home. And then also we did have a shorter registration period with this um, con. We did launch a whole new um, events website platform, and so that, that put us slightly behind schedule there. Uh, we did try and do some uh, concerted marketing efforts to boost ticket attendance when we were looking a little bit, uh, we were lagging a little bit more behind goal. We did two targeted email campaigns, uh, one towards the people who had attended a previous North American con and one to people that had already registered, asking them if they would like to invite a friend. And those were both pretty well received. We had um, really great open rates and uh, we got about 15 tickets out of that. Uh, so some opportunities to, for continued improvement is really working on building out our forecasting capabilities. We have a whole new infrastructure on our registration uh, site. So we have a kind of a new layer of data to kind of process. So we can kind of do what we can to reconcile that against our previous years, but we're really starting fresh going forward with the, the data and the kind of the nomenclature on what, what constitutes a registered sale versus a completed sale, that kind of thing. Um, we also are going to be uh, taking another look at our site selection calculator that we use to make sure that we have some of those um, secondary needs in there. So, for instance, West Coast may not be um, as accessible for people coming from here. And then marketing. So we have a four-pronged approach, advertising, um, paid advertising, content marketing, and email campaigns. Uh, we also utilize social media and word of mouth. Uh, so content marketing, this really is um, designed to support all of our efforts. So this is where we um, often drive our other calls to action to. Um, and we use it a lot to communicate information to the masses. And then emails. Ironically, we had our highest uh, opened email and our lowest opened email sent on the same day um, <laughs> to two different audiences. So uh, not to well, It wasn't like they got the second no. one and they were like, didn't I already get an email from you? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, for people that are already registered for the for DrupalCon, we do have a really great open rate, which is wonderful. And then the uh, lowest uh, open rate was sent to people that had clicked that they were interested in DrupalCon news. That's a good open rate, though. Yeah, it's very, very high. That's an average. Yeah, it's much above good. industry standard. Um, and then as far as social results go, we saw the highest engagement on things that didn't have a direct call to action, so things that were purely informational. So that was kind of interesting to us to see um, how people were really choosing to interact with the social media in a more of a informative way rather than a uh, push way. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to highlight your last oh, point yeah. there. Huge, huge thank you to Paul Johnson and Alec. I'm going to butcher his last name, so I'm just going to say Alex. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they were unbelievable volunteers and really, really did a great job of helping us stay on top of all of the uh, inbound and outbound messaging for social media throughout uh, the lead up to the event and then on site uh, as well. Alex Lofton ta taught me how to find um, Giphy's, so uh, you have him to thank. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so as far as marketing goes, we had uh, quite a few lessons learned, um, things that we just kind of build upon from previous years, but also just kind of reinforcing that uh, we really want to focus on using our targeting, targeted marketing channels, so email and paid ads to reach um, targeted audiences for specific actions, and using that content marketing on uh, social media and events to kind of provide the information and add that extra value to the community. Okay, so getting into the details of the actual content itself, our highest attended uh, session was Better Tools for Content Creators. And Aha! Ah! <laughs> site building! <laughs> uh, and then the top ranked site, or the top ranked session was Creating a Culture of Empowerment. 
That's a good session. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of uh, reinforcing the popularity we've seen of things that are kind of um, kind of broader overarching topics rather than yeah. Drupal specific. Yeah. Okay, so as far as what we heard back about sessions and content, one thing I want to also uh, mention is we had fewer um, uh, session evaluations filled out than in the past, um, but what we did find here from those people that filled those out was uh, that the, the speakers were really engaging in their delivery. Um, they found it really helpful when they had easily, um, it was easy to follow along when they had organized uh, presentation decks. And um, there were some sessions that really inspired people to continue uh, learning and looking back at projects with new eyes, taking a new approach to things. Um, the things that we've heard for next year is that there, we need some uh, extra work on essentially like coaching the speakers or making sure the sessions are at the quality that people are expecting and also making sure that we're conveying the right um, expectations with uh, the titles and descriptions, making sure that those are uh, particularly accurate. And for the generalized topics, they do want to hear um, more Drupal-specific examples. All right. Did you, you know, one thing I don't know, in Los Angeles, did um, Emma Jane do her speaker training again for those presenters? It's provided, but it's not required. Yeah, it's something that people can uh, seek out, but it wasn't. It's not required. But did she do it live for them? No, we did the recording. Okay, great. Um, and in those evaluations, what was really exciting is 89% said yes, they did learn something in the session they can use in real life. So that's um, really wonderful news. Um, we had, again, less unique evaluations, and one of the things we want to do um, is to continue to reach out to speakers to include that um, push to evaluate the session at the end of their um, slide deck. For those that use our our uh, designed, or excuse me, our, our conference themed uh, presentation deck that's in there, but for people that are using their own um, deck, we want to make sure that, to encourage them to encourage people to fill it out. Um, as a note, that might be a good thing to wise the uh, track chairs up about, so when they're doing reviews with speakers in the lead up, um, they could reinforce that message. Yeah, that's a great note. Um, okay, so jumping into some more uh, Oh, I'm missing one slide. Go ahead. Okay, so talking about sprints, we had 442 people show up on Friday. Um, we had a lot of great feedback from them, and I noticed. I know we had um, standing room only in the first time sprinter workshop, which was really, really exciting. Um, we also received a lot of really great feedback about the extended sprint location. I don't know. We had two different locations, one on each weekend, but both of them managed to have absolutely fabulous views of the city, and <laughs> it was pretty, pretty cool. Yep. Uh, okay, so jumping into our attendee survey, so not the session survey, but the survey on the event itself, uh, the top three things that met um, expectations were session content, building Drupal skills, and business networking. So the nice uh, thing here is that we are meeting expectations um, pretty much across the board. There are some things that we want to work on as far as it's interesting to see that both to hire and to find a job are on the far right hand side of the, <laughs> of the chart. Yeah, and then go to the next one. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, as far as things that, these are items that people said met um, or most exceeded uh, expectations. And the top three were, again, session content, building Drupal skills, and then and rather than um, personal networking, which it was in Austin, it was business networking for Los Angeles. So some things compared favorably, some things not. Yeah, yep. Uh, okay. I like to see the content and speakers one or higher. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, and then as far as uh, activities go, it's again le ranked left to right as far as usefulness goes. Um, and sessions, box, and networking were all really high. And then go to the next one. Okay, so the as far as people that indicated things that were very useful, uh, the things that we noticed a major improvement in were Drupal training, contribution sprints, and summits. Um, I think that's really exciting that uh, the sprints went up so noticeably. I think it's about 15%. Uh, the things that we saw some uh, declines in were the value of sessions and keynotes. Okay, so our net promoter score is 33, which is down from last year's score in Austin. Um, we have a few things that we think contributed to that, which we'll go into in the next couple slides. So overall, we definitely heard that people mainly came to hear sessions. So they came to um, grow their skills and meet a lot of new people. 
Um, and we are meeting and exceeding expectations, but they want higher quality in all aspects. So we have a very discerning group. <laughs> um, the, there were some really great feedback that we were collected as far as the actual sessions um, themselves. And there are some things that we're working as an internal team and then also with the program teams uh, to make sure that we are doing what we can to support our speakers and ensure that they have uh, what they need to, to provide content that, um, that everyone's excited about. Uh, we also got some really great feedback as far as our on-site experience. So uh, people enjoyed the signage and found that it was really helpful uh, and made it easy to navigate the conference. And um, uh, that was well received as well as the registration area. Uh, so some internal things that we're working on uh, implementing for uh, many for Barcelona, if not uh, New Orleans, uh, is creating a, some some really clear policies on refunds and free tickets. Um, so as I mentioned, we went uh, a bit over on what we had anticipated for free tickets. So we're trying to find some um, some good meeting grounds so that we can make sure that the people that uh, need those tickets are able to attend. Uh, we also had some issues with our website that uh, came up as, uh, as the launch of a first site for the first event on the new platform uh, to be expected. But we have already implemented a lot of things that will make it easier for our crew on site to um, execute the registration process and to do some reporting. Uh, we also found that we had some issues with the check-in process for the summits and trainings. Because the summits have grown so much and so quickly, we were um, a little bit uh, unprepared for all the people that showed up on site without registering that still believed they should attend the <laughs> summit. So uh, we've got some stuff in place uh, to help ease that uh, pain point for future comes. And uh, internally, we also decided we would like to come up with a better uh, procedure for launching sponsorships after the initial um, uh, sponsor prospectus goes out. That's kind of an internal operations thing. And along those lines, we want to make sure that we find um, some new sponsorship opportunities for sponsors that are looking for a different kind of engagement with the audience. Um, Rachel, I've got uh, uh, some ideas on that based on an event I went to here in Australia. So let's make a time to chat. Yeah, that'd be great. Make it a little. Okay. Let's go to the next one. So looking back, we removed barriers for first-time attendees, and we found ways to expand that further. So we launched the first-time attendee social, and that was really great. Uh, it was well-received, and we heard, we want more. So we are looking at ways to expand that to um, a full day and maybe involving uh, possibly an early first-time sprinter workshop in the week so that people can sprint throughout the week. Uh, we also need to focus more on the basics by a holistic con experience. So uh, making sure that things are just kind of tied up and, and presented with the right uh, lens. And we also want to make sure that we do a better job of communicating the value of a con. So uh, making sure that people are clear on their expectations and what they're getting when they come. And, um, you know, finding ways to present the con to, to each individual audience. We're blessed with having a, a very diverse group that attends. Um, but because of that, everybody has different expectations on what they're going to see and what they're going to experience. Uh, we also did a great job of fulfilling volunteer requests. Um, so extended sprint space, sprint supplies, things like that. So we want to continue to do, do that in the future. And uh, our signage, again, was something that we heard really great feedback on as far as being helpful, easy to read. So going forward, again, we're going to work on that programming revamp, working with the speakers, um, making sure that the tracks are um, things that are uh, things that are continuing to be really relevant. Um, creating that holistic conference experience. So uh, one thing that we've been talking about is creating some recommended track or session paths for people of different experience levels or different um, job backgrounds. Um, we heard loud and clear that people would like something either in the form of a, an official DrupalCon app or an easy to use mobile version of the site. So we're looking at our options there. And we want to continue to develop our outreach to those that are new to the Drupal universe. One of the exciting things is our beginner and our advanced numbers did go up. So we're seeing some of those new people um, come into the Drupal sphere, uh, and we want them to come back and keep coming. And another thing is we just really internally we need to stay nimble. So operationally, as D8 is hopefully close to becoming a very real and realized and released product, um, we need to be nimble in the fact that that may have an immediate impact for 2016 cons or 2017 cons. So um, being uh, adaptable and ready to scale based on the, the demands of the community. And now it's on to New Orleans. Any questions? What was our net 
promoter score the last time we uh, we took that pulse? It was 53 in Austin. In Austin. In Austin. Yeah. So that's a big drop. Yeah. It yeah. is, although I think it was pretty similar to what we saw in Amsterdam last year. It's interesting because when you look at some of the uh, the charts, don't have a seizure while I back through slides quickly. Okay. Like when you look at when you look at some of these charts, right? Like uh, there are places where LA beats Austin and places where Austin beats LA. So you'd have, you know, basically on the whole, I think they're rated about the same across a bunch of these areas. So it's it's interesting to me that the net promoter score was so significantly different. And my my gut would be a lot of that is the was honestly the the distance between the hotel <laughs> and the conference center. Yeah, and I think also uh, we had a higher number of uh, surveys filled out last year. And um, my experience is that yeah, the more you have, the more you, the yeah. more you have, um, and the people that I think tend to drop off are the ones that had a had a good experience. So yeah. um, that could be too. Yeah. Do we incentivize um, evaluations in any way? We like, don't at this point. Yeah, I mean, we could do. We could look at doing some sort of, you know, drawing one in, of the people yeah, who fills out an evaluation. In Austin, they had a drawing to win a free ticket. Oh, you can do a free ticket drawing for LA. Okay, maybe that was part of it. Bring it back. See what happens. One, one thing what I've seen people do effectively is during the conference itself, they just take two minutes while everybody's sitting in their chair and with a mobile app or a mobile website. And ask them to do the evaluation right there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we definitely mentioned it in the closing yeah, session, but it yeah, would have been helpful to have them do it there, yeah, there, there while we're. No, really, we'll wait. We'll sit here and wait while you finish your survey. <laughs> now and then, we're gonna, and then we'll tell you the city. Yeah. Now we're going to play a song, you finish your survey, and then we'll tell you where the next con is. <laughs> well, the, the yeah. I mean, I've seen it work. It works. Yeah, People do it. Does. it. Yeah, I think, I think that's brilliant. Uh, I think it's brilliant, Grace. Yeah. Matt just says, too, like, we'll, we'll, we'll wait until we get to a certain completion rate before we do it, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> that may lower our net promoter score, though. Yeah. <laughs> what, if, what if you just put the answer at the end of the survey? Don't tell them. Oh, oh yeah. Do you want to find out what the next con is? Oh, Take the survey. Yeah. All right. Those Any are other ideas. questions? All right. <clears throat> Floor is for uh, Joshua. Thanks, I think to talk about Drupal.org. It is. Yes. All right. You want to control your own slide, Destiny? I don't know how I filled that. Yeah, sure. Just uh, hand it off a keyboard here. So I want to walk through real quickly the uh, the Drupal.org prioritization that we process that we just. Uh, this is the first time we've repeated the process. So we initially introduced the idea of prioritization uh, last year over the course of the summer. Uh, we came out with our, our first roadmap as. Uh, right around the time of Amsterdam and started uh, sharing that out. Um, one of the things that we noticed, though, is that uh, because needs change as the year goes on, the process probably needed to happen a little bit more frequently. Um, and so this was what I, I'm going to call the first of our quarterly updates uh, to our prioritization. Uh, the nice thing about this is it allows us to do a little, have a little bit more focus. Um, when we did the 2014 process, we added work along the way, and the the result of that is is it it it, it essentially made it so that we were able to work on a lot of different things and move a lot of things forward just a little bit, um, but we weren't able to to get as much movement on any one thing as we really needed, um, and so I, I think this new process is is definitely. It's going to allow us to have a little bit more focus uh, from quarter to quarter, particularly in quarters leading up to a con when we really want to be able to show something to the community um, and perhaps even reveal something to the community associated with those big events. So one of the things that we uh, we kind of took a step back and Sorry. said. Uh, I had a quick question. Yes. Sorry, but what was the color coding on the slide? So I'm not sure I followed that, the green and the red and the black. Uh, so the the black was uh, those were the original um, items that we prioritized. Uh, the red were things that uh, changed pretty significantly based on the size and scope of uh, the content strategy work. 
Um, and then uh, the green were things that were kind of added in. They weren't they weren't part of the planned items that we were going to do in prioritization. When we originally did prioritization, we had like um, we basically had a list of, of seven things. These are the seven things we're going to do. And then because there wasn't a way to kind of regularly update that roadmap, the other things uh, were added as we went along because they would have prioritized out highly. Um, we just didn't necessarily have a process to communicate that. Um, as we approached the prioritization process again, one of the things that I felt was really important is that it actually aligned with the strategic framework that um, set the goals and uh, set the really that, that mission for the organization. We have to be filling that through the work that we choose to focus staff on. And so you're all very familiar with the, uh, the goals that we, we've set over the last couple of uh, uh, board retreats. Um, in addition to those goals, uh, we had two immediate priorities that we factored into how we did uh, the prioritization um, in, in our last meeting. Everybody knows right now that the, the biggest, most important thing we could do is uh, make sure that Drupal 8 is on track. And so uh, we wanted to have something in our prioritization process that got a, gave a lot of extra weight to any infrastructure issues that we needed to resolve in order to allow Drupal 8 to happen. So if there was a uh, a critical issue blocking release, uh, we were going to prioritize that higher naturally. And the other thing, and, and this is obvious based on kind of where we're at right now as an organization and looking at our total expenses and how revenue is coming in, if there was an opportunity for a particular um, feature that would also drive mission-driven revenue, um, that was going to be something that would also get a pretty significant bump uh, from the working groups. In the end, we, we came up with uh, the following prioritization matrix, and I'll, I'll describe it really quickly because um, I, I don't want to get down to the specifics of how the numbers are assigned. But um, with the working groups, we came up with uh, the scale. Everything is, is weighted on a 0 to 10 point scale. Uh, you'll notice that Drupal 8 and Revenue got 10s, so they gave a lot of extra weight. You multiply that times the score that's given, whether that's a 9, 3, um, or a 1, um, and uh, or a 0. You can actually give a 0 for this as well. And uh, you'll, you'll notice that we basically just took all of the board goals and gave them a relative weight based on this point in time. Uh, this will be the thing that changes from prioritization to prioritization because we will change those weights um, according to what's needed at the time uh, based on the conversation with the working group members. Uh, and it's, it's, it was really cool too because the working group prioritization process, we had all the working groups represented, um, including uh, the, the technical working group. Um, all of the, the priorities were also reviewed by at least one member of uh, Actually, documentation working group had representation there as well. And then all of the Drupal.org working groups, content working group, software working group, and infrastructure working group. So really good representation. It helped us get to kind of a, a strong list of these really are the most important things. Uh, those little letters that you see under each of the goals uh, represent the parts of our skills acquisition uh, triangle. So an S equals skilled, an E equals expert. And so what we were basically prioritizing there is the idea of this, this particular goal particularly speaks to the skilled to expert transition or the expert to master transition. And they're kind of weighted accordingly. Out of that process, um, our top four priorities, sorry, I'm changing the wrong screen. Our uh, top four priorities are very much focused on Drupal 8, uh, followed by things that are, are probably the most pressing at this very moment on, on Drupal.org itself to, uh, to hit all the goals. So uh, localized.drupal.org, um, I don't know how many know this, but uh, last week, week before last, time goes by very quickly, uh, we upgraded localized.drupal.org to Drupal 7, which was a blocker to us finishing one last thing um, that allows for uh, localization to work with Drupal 8 core. Um, that one last thing is on on the plate of a couple of people. We've got one community member helping with one issue and uh, one staff member uh, also helping push that last issue across the finish line. 
Uh, Drupal CI is the other thing that we've spent a, a lot of time on. Uh, we now have a meeting every other week uh, with core maintainers uh, to just make sure that we're knocking off the last few issues related to that that would prevent Drupal 8 from being properly tested. Uh, we are very close at this point. We have Drupal CI is working to test across, uh, I believe it's six, uh, six different environments, which is a combination of uh, a version of PHP plus a particular database version. So an example would be PHP 5 plus um, MySQL 5.5, that sort of thing. Um, and that suite of tests, uh, just to give people kind of a, a sense of what Drupal CI is doing these days, uh, that suite of tests, uh, it tests over 94,000 assertions. Um, every time somebody submits a patch uh, to uh, Drupal core and that that gets checked um, and the entire Drupal CI framework actually scales up and scales down so what we actually see in practice is that's that's really fascinating here is uh, we have certain times of the day where the number of tests being run drops to zero that's about uh, 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Pacific time is right around that time um, and then we also see times of the day where that will spike up to 35 to 50 simultaneous test spots running to, to plow through all the tests that are being submitted. Uh, that auto scaling is, is gonna be really important to the long-term sustainability of the cost associated to Drupal CI. Um, it's also something like that 94,000 tests, the, the sheer scope and scale of that is, is something that uh, very few other open source projects can point to, our test coverage is pretty phenomenal. In fact, with the uh, the recent test bots that were created for uh, testing PHP 7, which isn't even fully released, um, we've actually been helping them find some bugs. Uh, every time that, that test run, it actually uncovers like new seg faults that then get reported back to PHP 7. And we actually had an incident where uh, we pushed a couple changes and then they retested and they, they fixed PHP 7 as a result of the rather extensive uh, and, and very powerful testing that we do for, for Drupal. So kind of Yay. a cool, cool win. Yeah, we're upstream. hoping the PHP community move forward. <laughs> Yay, that's really cool. Uh, so obviously that one has been a big priority. It continues to be, we're, we're on track right now that we for sure will be, uh, all the blockers will be out of the way for Drupal 8 uh, for Barcelona. Uh, we also have kind of a secondary goal related to that, that we want to turn off the old test bot infrastructure by Barcelona. It costs us about $2,000 a month, and it is not variable pricing. So um, it's something that we very much want to be able to use that um, infrastructure budget towards other things. Um, the next two items that are on the list are, are ones that uh, they scored out really well. Search being something that just frankly should work on Drupal.org, but it's never really gotten the attention it needs. Uh, we have a very nice uh, execution plan that we, we think we can put in place for Barcelona so that if somebody searches for some pretty common search phrases on Drupal.org, they will get what they expect, which is, sounds simple, but it's, uh, it's something that, as I said, it's not been given a lot of attention and now we're going to give it some. Um, and then the documentation section, which um, particularly as we're, we're rolling into Drupal 8 launching, we felt like this was an area that needs to be really strong and needs to be set up to be successful from the start of Drupal 8. So as Drupal 8 is released and all that documentation starts getting created, um, it will be a much better experience. A lot of the features that get added to the documentation section will actually help across Drupal.org as a whole. For instance, we're talking about implementing co comment notify uh, so that the comments made on a piece of documentation can give notification back to the creators and maintainers of that piece of documentation. Uh, we'll be able to use those same comment notify techniques across all the content types on Drupal.org so that communication is just a little bit easier to have. Right now, the only uh, communication that has good notification tied to it is really the issue queue. If we get to it, now our next prioritization process is going to be in Barcelona, but if uh, we can get those four priorities that we've set for Q3 knocked out before Barcelona. The next things that we will jump onto in order of priority are pro project application improvements, trying to make it easier for people to submit new modules and themes to Drupal.org, uh, working with the technical working group on some implementation of features that they want to do there. Uh, improved project tools to make it easier to find all those modules. 
um, uh, uh, the Y Drupal section, which previously uh, we were working on. And actually the Y Drupal section, I don't think is going to be blocked. Uh, as soon as we've released the basic tools for documentation section, um, our marketing team will be able to continue um, building the content for the Y Drupal section. So that should be uh, pretty much ready to go right around the time of Barcelona as well. Um, other things that we are going to be focusing on are build with Drupal section. Uh, there's the desire to do a Drupal 8 user guide, um, and that would be guide.drupal.org, uh, a better contribution section, um, and we still have on our, our, our long-term plan uh, addressing the issue workspaces and kind of getting that, that pull request type functionality into particularly the core issue queue um, as, as a better way to do work in our community. So next steps, face-to-face uh, -face meetings with uh, all the working group members in Barcelona. Um, that prioritization process will happen again and we'll shift the numbers according to the status of Drupal 8 and also the, um, the kind of where the goals uh, uh, rank in terms of importance in that moment. Um, and then we would also like to look at adding perhaps a couple core maintainers to that uh, quarterly prioritization process to make sure that we're uh, keeping the development of Drupal in line with where it needs to be. Um, um, the last thing I would ask is, what do you feel would make this process better? Uh, I've got one that for you, Josh. If you're going to add a couple of core maintainers, I think it would be really good to see if you could find um, people who had, are big in the contribu um, contributed modules space and not necessarily core, because I think there's a lot more people who are working in that space who we don't necessarily hear their pain points. Mm, definitely. And also a site builder representative if you can find one. Yeah. That's actually, uh, we do want to add a site builder to our uh, software working group, at least one site builder. Um, and I know that that's a, that's a priority to begin looking for that person around the Barcelona time frame. Cool. I think that's kind of missing in the in the mix at the moment. Agreed. Some more thoughts. Are there other things that uh, the board would like to weigh on that could be better about the process and the prioritization? So this is Reese. Um, that, that all you know all, all looks good to me. You know, for me, I guess. Um, and I know this is kind of a bad question, <laughs> but like how. Is there things that we can do to, you know, create more velocity? Is there, you know, is there anything that is, you know, blocking you or that's, you know, kind of hurdles that make things slower? Um, well, velocity is my favorite word, Dries. <laughs> As everyone in this room was snickering a little bit when you said velocity, because I use the word velocity all the time. We have a quote up on the wall in here from Josh. It's, I only wear velocity style t-shirts. <laughs> um, so I, I, I actually think we're, um, we're beginning to get faster. And, and, and that's kind of hard to, um, that's hard to see at the moment. Uh, though I will say that the team has been working together now our, our last member of our, our product and engineering team on the, the Drupal Association staff was, was hired in November of last year. So we're, we're just past the you know, six month mark where this group has been working together for a while. I, I think um, certainly there have been some distracting factors this, this summer. Um, but the nice thing about them working together long enough is they're beginning to get some um, kind of economies of scale that come from knowing what your, your teammate needs from you and being able to, to deliver a, uh, a piece of code that you know is going to quickly kind of make it up the chain. And so that is getting faster. Um, I do think there is still a lot of room for improvement around how we can um, accept community contributions and um, how we can get them working with us in ways that that will also keep the velocity moving. Uh, one of the things we saw with with Drupal CI, for instance, instance, is that that project, in order to get to production, uh, required a little bit of shift in thinking from what's possible to what can we what what will 
remove the DA blocker and how do we get this thing launched? Um, and I think that that kind of pragmatism that comes from, you know, a core team that's continuously working on something uh, will lead to velocity. It's just, it, it takes time. Uh, a lot of the stuff we're working on are big and complex. Drupal CI is a way, way, way bigger project than I imagined a year ago. Yeah, I just want to go on record as saying again too, like if Josh says that the team can move faster, then you know I believe you. The team can go faster, but I but I also feel like um, I don't. I probably said this, but I'll say it again. I don't really think it's fair to say that the team is not going fast enough. I think the team has done a tremendous amount of work, but there are two issues. One is that not all of that work has been highly visible work. A lot of that has been you know, dealing with the cruft of Drupal.org, and that work is unappreciated and unseen, right? And the other bit for me that I think is really important to note is that, um, you know, if you go back to Josh's slide about the priorities that they've been working with for the last year, we started out with five and ended up with 11. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's disruptive. Um, and a lot of those priorities came up at the very, uh, you know, in sort of um, heightened this is a crisis ways, um, and got added to the list. And I don't, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? I feel like that's a normal part of this process where not only is Josh's team pouring, um, but the, the idea that we have a team of engineers that can work on Drupal.org is new. And so having people to call on is new. So that's just all part of the process of the community leaders, you know, getting, getting used to what's possible as well. But I just, you know, I don't like to say that they're not going fast enough. I just don't really think that's fair. Yeah, it's it's interesting if we look at no, yeah, just like, to be clear, I didn't just one quick correction. I didn't say they were slow. Well, fair <laughs> enough. You know, just uh, I was just wondering if there is you know ways we can go faster, even you know. And I understand there's a lot of forming of the team that have to happen, and I understand there's a lot of legacy cruft, if you will, that needed to be cleaned up. So um, I was I was wondering if there was you know blockers, things that we can help with to you know, make make them able to run faster. And the reason I ask is because we have a lot of things to do. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, and while we're, we're chipping away at these things, um, that's that's great. But um, you know, yeah, I, I think we we have a we have a great team. Obviously, there's ten of us um, that are doing this uh, as Drupal Association staff now. Um, that's not a huge team uh, for the number of things that we're working on, um, but I, I really do think that we're beginning to get a lot of the uh, technical blockers out of the way that that made us that made it difficult to implement new code on Drupal.org. Uh, we have a new set of Git uh, servers in place. We have new database servers in place. We're delivering through the CDN. I mean, th they all seem like um, infrastructural things that, well, why wasn't that already the case? And and I agree with that, except I also look at it as, well, it wasn't already in, in place because, uh, you know, prior to the beginning of 2013, we had, uh, or 2014, we had two people working full time on on Drupal.org and, and the priorities. So now that we've actually got a few more people that are, are uh, continuously focused on it um, and, I, I will be honest, this is some of the most committed people I have ever worked with. Uh, it is not uncommon to uh, to see startup culture like hours of work, uh, weekends, days off. They're a crazy committed group of people. Um, and it's, it's just getting to that point that we can really get the blockers out of the way that are technical hurdles and, and really begin developing new features. And, I, and we're close to that. It's taken a while to get here, but we're very close. That, that's, um, that's great to hear. Um, I, I do believe uh, Kieran wants to ask a question. Oh. I think you need, you may have to be unmuted, I don't know. Yeah, hang on a second, sorry. Uh, Matt, can you move your laptop below so I can see the whole screen? Uh, Kieran wants to understand the Karen says, I'd like to understand the investment in revenue from IT versus the investment in providing services to the community. So uh, let me see if I can open the control panel and actually unmute Karen because I don't understand. 
fully. All right, there you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Karen, I can't unmute you because your phone, somehow muted because of the phone connection and you're not connected to the computer audio, actually. Um, so I, I don't quite understand your question, Karen, unfortunately, but if you want to talk to me about it offline or shoot me an email, I'll be happy to try to follow up. Okay. Is there any other questions? Mm. Is anyone reading the questions, says Karen? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, Donna, you had uh, one other question you put in here. Um, it's more of a more of a comment. I, th I think it might be good to follow up on the that technical debt that we've been paying down. It might make a good um, a good story because Drupal.org itself is a complex Drupal site, and there might be some learnings there that um, could be shared. It might be a nice way to also let the community know that this you know unseen, unheard, and unthanked work is is happening, but you know in a useful way. Yeah. So the, the team does put up every month uh, like what's happened on Drupal.org uh, posts. Yeah, really comprehensive. But I, I, I know, but I mean more from a, a, a communications-y kind of a mm. thing rather than the, the highly developer-centric story that it's, it's told that way. I'm sort of more, say. do you know what I mean? Yeah, like a, an episode of Dirty Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking Maybe about? <laughs> I was just thinking I need Ryan because Ryan is my metaphor provider. He would he would come up with a metaphor that would describe our technical debt right now. Uh, uh, but yeah, it looks like Karen. I can unmute you. I do agree with that though, Donna. All right, can you hear me now? Yep. Yay! Hey. hey. Thank you. Um, okay, so I guess what I'm saying is, you know, we saw a long list of uh, IT projects, and I don't know if you can go back and show them. You know, you said it went from five to eleven. The question I have is, you know, when you look at your portfolio, you know, 10 headcount, um, and you look at your portfolio of investments that you're making, a lot of them are very focused on how do we provide services, how do we deal with technical debt, how do we deal with uh, maintenance, how do we deal with new crises um, as they emerge. And so the question, as we're looking at all these projects, is are any of these specific to um, specific to revenue generation? And you know, let me add a little bit of context. So. You know, we're in a bit of a startup boom again, and many organizations see um, increasingly their IT dollars are being reallocated to marketing to drive lead generation and to fill the funnel to drive sales. So we see the marketing organization is increasingly um, owning more IT dollars and deploying marketing and sales technologies to drive um, to drive revenue, and that, you know, that's kind of the standard in the industry, uh, or at least on the commercial side of the world. And I, I think the nonprofit side will will shortly follow where it hasn't. So just if you can, if you could reflect, and you feel free to not to answer now and take it off to the executive session, or or get back to me at a later time. But I think it would be it would be useful to understand, you know, where the IT dollars are towards revenue generation versus where they are on the community services. Yeah, I mean, I think in the 2014 process, uh, revenue wasn't even a consideration, really, right? I mean, we had some projects that we were doing, like uh, Drupal events. Drupal, yeah, Drupal events, but that snuck in, right? And yeah, then yeah, Drupal jobs. And Drupal jobs. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't part of the prioritization process, revenue consideration. So that's something new for this new quarterly process that that is in fact considered, and we are taking on work that we think will either, um, you know, strengthen or provide new revenue opportunities. I would say the balance of the work, because we have such a huge backlog of ideas and features that have been requested over the years, the balance of the work being requested is definitely uh, community features for the community to improve how they interact and engage, um, features to better communicate the value of Drupal by allowing the community to build things on Drupal.org. Um, that's that's definitely the balance of the work, but I. I I reiterate what Holly's saying. We're we're looking for ways to do mission-driven revenue and and ways that one of the cool things about that is if we can find a thing that helps us drive revenue, it may actually help fund a position that helps us provide more mission. Yeah. And so we're always kind of looking at that from a um, what is the sustainable way for us to to grow going forward. And this is Joe. One thing I would add on that that trend, Karen, too, is. Uh, a lot of the, the marketing dollars that are spent are on SaaS products, uh, marketing automation and, and so forth. And um, I, I think a lot of that trend is driven because the marketers wanted to get around IT. So, um, <laughs> you know, 
a lot of those, those investments are made outside of the IT department. Yeah. But I think for us, like we definitely see Drupal.org as our best revenue opportunity. Um, but as Josh said, just to stress, mission-based revenue opportunity, finding those places where we can um, create create revenue, but do so in a way that also serves the project. So. Yeah, because the community is not going to say, hey, we need a feature so that we can make more money off Drupal.org. That's yeah. not, not something the community is ever going to stand up and demand. Yeah. Right. But let me know if you want to follow up on that. All right, awesome. Um, all right, well, is there any other questions? If not, I suggest we move to the executive session. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah. Um, I'd Thank like you. to say th thanks to Josh and, and Rachel for great um, great presentations to us this this, this session. Really, thank you. It's really okay. informative. Nice work. Um, can I, um, in between switching sessions, I'm going to grab coffee. Okay. See you in a few.